Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Olaf for the celebration of the second Sunday of Easter. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider is Father Michael Krennick. If there is room in your pew as Mass begins, and if you notice someone looking for a place to sit, please welcome them into your pew. Please continue to practice social distancing and continue to wear your mask at all times. You may sing softly while wearing your mask. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, we come together to celebrate Easter, the great joy of the risen Christ. But for those times that we have failed to recognize the gift of Christ, for those times that we have sinned, let us now seek God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been baptized and washed by whose spirit they have been reborn and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. What great power the apostles bore, bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. We indeed, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written 
so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Every year, on that second Sunday of Easter, we celebrate today's Gospel. So much so that sometimes people call it Doubting Thomas Sunday. Others call it Divine Mercy Sunday. And both would be true. But I think we miss something that's very important in today's Gospel if we focus just on how Jesus invited his disciples to go out and forgive sins, or the doubts about Thomas, and then all of a sudden his statement of faith. For in our gospel today, there are three phrases that Jesus uses. Actually, it's really one phrase used three times. Peace be with you. His disciples, when they first see him, or at least ten that were gathered that first time, start to go wild with excitement. So much so that Jesus has to settle them down. Peace be with you, he says again. And then he goes on to invite them to go out and proclaim the good news, to forgive sins, and to recognize that the great joy that they are experiencing is the joy that he wants all to know. It's also the peace he wants us all to know as well. So that what happens that week after, for Thomas and the other ten are all gathered now, and once again the doors are locked, and Jesus comes and says, Peace be with you. And then immediately turns to Thomas, and he doesn't berate him, he just simply invites him, Come and put your fingers here. Put your hand here. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. In other words, have peace. The peace of mind knowing that Jesus really did fulfill all that he had said he would do. For through his cross and resurrection, he has brought peace into our world. A peace the world has never known up to that time and will never know again unless we put our full trust in Jesus Christ. For that is the true peace that can come to each one of our hearts, each one of our lives. My guess is there is at least one or two people who came here today, maybe with a little trepidation, maybe it's your first time back celebrating with us live, or maybe it's just having things going on in your life right now that seem overwhelming. And perhaps you need to hear those words. Peace be with you. Jesus is the one who distributes that peace. Jesus is the one who invites us to imitate him, to go out and proclaim to the ends of the earth that great news. And ultimately, the disciples do that. For if we listened closely to today's gospel, twice we hear the disciples were still very much afraid. For that first time that Jesus appeared, they're in a locked room. And so they still were a week later. They were still afraid, fearful. But it is Christ who brings them out of their shell. And ultimately, when we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, it will be that fullness of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised as well, that invited them to go out and proclaim that good news. So much so that we heard in our first reading that people would come and share everything they had and no longer say, well, this is mine. This is my 401k. This is what I'm relying on to get to the end of my life. But rather, they placed it at the disciples' feet and said, do with it as you need. Help the community that we are developing here. And after all, isn't that what Christ wants us to do as well? to share the gifts that we have been given. And it doesn't always have to be the monetary gifts. Going out and sharing the peace of Christ with somebody who is really afraid at this time might be the best gift that you give throughout this week. 
helping them to overcome the fear, much like the disciples had, to recognize God's love is here for each and every one of us. Recently, somebody came to confession and said, I am so sorry that my sins put Jesus up on the cross. And this person was taking on the whole sins of the world. And I just reminded them, you know, everyone gathered here in this church did the same thing. But it is the love of Christ that overcomes sin and death. He gave the disciples the ability to forgive sins. He asks us to do the same, to go out and bring a peace that does not know, and does not just hold on to the wrongs against us, but wants us to develop that gift of love, that gift of peace. So as we celebrate this Eucharist today, place before this altar any fear, any trepidations, anything that is weighing heavily upon your mind, and know that God's love is in the midst. For when we put our full trust, as our second reading reminded us, when we trust that Jesus Christ was the Son of God who came into the world to redeem us, it is then that we have true peace. And our only peace that we need this day is to know God's love for each one of us gathered here, whether in person or watching on television or live streaming, that love for, of God for each one of us is very real. He invites us to put our faith, our hope, our trust in him. So as Jesus says, peace be with you, and take that peace with you throughout this week and offer it as a sign that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. And as we are in the octave of Easter, just as we did last Sunday, we invite you to now renew your baptismal promises, recognizing that God's love is there for us as we profess our faith. And so I ask, do you renounce Satan? Yeah, I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for all eternity. Amen. with the life that God creates, God lives. 
promises a peace the world cannot give, and we trust in that promise. Through him we bring our prayers before our loving God. That the church may always be inspired by its love for God to preserve and keep God's commandments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all nations will prioritize care for the poor and vulnerable moving our world ever closer to a commitment to the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those gathered here will respond to Christ's presence with a belief in his mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may continue to work for peace in our city as we strive for justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all afflicted with disease and illness, may they know firsthand the healing power of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially our loved ones and those who have lost their lives to COVID-19, that they will experience the fullness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I invite us now to join our prayers as one as we pray our Archdiocesan Synod prayer. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. make Amen. our ears to hear, make our eyes to see, make our mouths to speak, make our hearts to seek, make our hands to reach out and touch the world with your love. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us.
Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they a play. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Olaf and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. the distribution of the Eucharist. Over on this side, we ask that you follow the slides, but it will start with the far side, have you come forward and return by the side, then the middle section, once they are completed, come forward, return through the middle, just the opposite, the middle, then return through the middle and the far side by the side, and hopefully I'll find a Eucharistic minister to come up into the choir. We would ask that you stay where you are, and they will come to you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Stretch forth your hand and feel the place where the nails were. Alleluia. And be not doubtful, but believing. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that a reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. A couple of announcements. Please continue to pray for peace in our community as the trial continues. You may join us at 8 a.m. for the Franciscan Peace Prayer in our Franciscan Garden and the Chaplet of Mercy at 3 p.m. either in the chapel Monday through Friday or here on the weekend. You may also do these prayers in your own homes at that same time so that we join our prayers to one and continue to ask for peace in our community. For the Feast of Pentecost on May 22nd and 23rd, we are looking for people willing to proclaim our first reading in a language other than English. Please contact myself if you are interested in helping us out. There is a notice in the bulletin as well about this so that all the information is there as well or on the website. And uh, so far we have at least one person willing to do it in Finnish, but we'll look for any and other languages as well that you may speak and if you feel comfortable coming proclaiming the first reading. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you have a blessed day and blessed week ahead. And may we always know that the peace of Christ walks with us. The Lord be with you. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness of his blessing. Amen. May he, who by his redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs of an internal, oh, try that, eternal inheritance. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Our masses ended, go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.